This is 5-85. Uh, uh, this is a pretty good problem. Here you have uh, two things. You have an A36 steel rod which is inside here and you have a magnes magnesium tube on the, on the outer diameter that is actually bonded to the steel rod. The magnesium is an AM1004-61 magnesium tube. Um, there's a torque being applied down here. This is torque is being applied of 5,000 newton meters. So what I did here is I drew a free by diagram of the torque being applied. And what you have to consider here is you have two different materials. So each one of these materials is going to um, have a resulting torque. And the reason being is since you, this is bonded, that the um, angle of twist at, for the, excuse me, for the magnesium and the steel will be the same. So if that's the case, then each of these will contribute to the, uh, the torque. So if we have a free body diagram, then all we have to really do is sum the torques or sum the moments. It really makes no difference. I'll just sum the torques. If I do that, and I'm going to let anything that goes this way, I'll make negative. Okay. So if it goes this way, it's going to be negative. Then if you do that, that will give you minus 5,000. And I'll call this one the outer one, so that will be the magnesium, we'll call it Tm, so plus Tm, I'll do that again, sorry, plus Tm, plus this part here will be the steel rod, call it Ts, that must equal to zero. All right. So here you have one equation, you have two unknowns, there's really no way to solve that. So what we can go back to is, since I stated that the angle of twist has to be the same thing, that we know that, th that theta, which is going to equal to the torque times the length over the polar moment of inertia times g, which is this, uh, excuse me, the shear rigidity. Okay, so we'll do the steel first. So we will list that as the torque of the steel times the length. Now the polar moment inertia, this is a solid steel. So the radius here is going to be 20 millimeters. So we'll convert that back to 0 0.02. We'll take that to the fourth power and then we'll multiply that pi over 2. So that's our polar moment inertia. And then you have to look up the G value for the steel. And the G value for the steel is going to be, let me go ahead and increase this, is going to be 75 times 10 to the ninth. Okay, now we're going to set that equal to the torque of the magnesium times its length. Now the magnesium is, is a hollow tube, so the polar moment inertia is going to be pi over 2 times the outer radius to the fourth power. minus the inner radius, the hollow part, which will be 0.02 to the fourth power. And then we're going to multiply it by the uh, shear rigidity of that material. <coughs> and magnesium is approximately 18 times 10 to the ninth. All right, <coughs> when we solve for that, now you can solve for the steel, the torque steel or torque magnesium, it makes no difference at all. Uh, when I did that, I got something approximately, the torque of the steel was approximately about 0.278, the torque of the magnesium. All right. So now we can take this right here, and we can put it back into this equation right here and solve for the magnesium. That's all we have to do there. Okay. If you do that, you will find out quickly, let me scroll down here. You can solve for the torque of each, and you're going to get a value approximately. The torque of the steel is about 1087 newton meters, and the torque of the magnesium <clears throat> is going to be approximately 3913. Let me make that better. 3913. Okay, so there are your two torques. Now we know when we uh, calculate shear stress, 
we're going to go back and say shear stress is always going to equal to the torque times the max or times the radius. If we're looking for max, we're going to use max radius. And then all we have to do is divide it by the uh, polar moment inertia of that material. Now if we do the steel, the steel is going to be a solid piece. So if we run that, we can find that the torque of the steel is going to be the 1087 we have here times the radius, and the maximum radius is 0.02. Again, we'll divide that by the same polar moment inertia that we used right up here. And we do that, we will get something approximately 86.5 megapascals. Okay, so that's what the uh, shear stress would be for the steel. We'll do that for the magnesium. Now the magnesium is hollow. Its maximum will occur at the outer edge, not the inner edge. So we'll take the torque that we've had for the magnesium, which we said was 39. 13. We'll mod multiply it by the maximum radius and we set up here maximum radius from the center out to the edge is going to be half of 80 or 40. So we'll convert that back to 0.04. We'll divide that by, now again it's hollow, so you got to do pi over 2 times the outer radius to the fourth power minus the inner radius to the fourth power and we run that, we'll get 41.5 megapascals. Okay, so those are the maximum uh, shear stress. Now I believe, if I go back up, the problem wanted you to draw the sketch of shear stress distribution. <clears throat> All right, so if you're going to do that, you're going to have to find out what the shear stress is going to be in the, at the, um, I'll show you right here. You need to find out what, what it's going to be right here for the magnesium. We've calculated what it's going to be on the outer, but not the inner. So we do that. Torque at the inner radius, we'll call it IR, of the magnesium is going to be the same torque value, 39, 13 times 0.02, and divided by all this pi over 2 times 0.04 to the fourth minus 0.02 to the fourth. That's going to give you that. But you notice the only difference between this one and this one, this is 50%. So really all we have to do is divide that one by two and that'll give you about 20.8 or so megapascals. All right. <clears throat> all right. Now if you want to show your distribution, what you would do in a case like this is you could draw yourself um, some circles. We'll draw one of the, sh uh, the steel I'll draw another one, uh, the outer magnesium. I'll try to get this to line up just a little bit better, maybe. That's pretty calm and close. <clears throat> now if we draw horizontal line coming from here, like this, again, we're not going to have any shear stress at all in the uh, outer one until you hit this here. This is the only place you're going to see the outer one. Now the steel is going to be from here to here. So what you could do here would be draw your arrow up to here, like this. And again, this is just, well, let me get that straighter. This just kind of, up oh, right here. It's kind of, oh, bear with me, sorry. Here we go. From here up. And what that would be would be from here all the way down. Again, this is just for the steel. And <clears throat> what you would do, you'd be label that as 86.5 from this end here. Megapascals. And we go all, by, all the way back down to zero. Again, what that would be, you'd be, it would be, it should be arrows coming up here. And that's a linear relationship. Now, if you want, <clears throat> you could do the steel by itself. They don't have to be on top of each other. So I will grab both of those uh, circles and we'll slide them over. Hopefully I can get them all. We'll edit. We will clone that and we'll move that over here. So now if I'm going to do just the magnesium by itself, again I'll draw a line here. 
again when you do that with a magnesium um, you're not going to have anything here but this does not mean it's zero here because you still have a a radius from here to here being 0.02 so what this would do this would shoot up from here up and then your maximum would be out here we would draw a line from here to here and you can put the other arrows in I mean you could do this this <clears throat> and you could label those so the inner is going to be here and this would be the outer and you can put values in here this would be the 20.8 megapascals for the magnesium and then the outer would be 41.5 megapascals and that's it it's not a bad problem at all but it's a good problem as far as understanding how two different materials can take on a certain percentage of the torque alright best of luck with these problems